Welcome to Beards, Biceps, Beliefs, and Sometimes Bourbon. Where you will hear all about how to remove the roadblocks in your life so you can achieve the success you want in your career, business, fitness, and relationships. And also, my favorite bourbon tastings. Welcome to another episode of Beards, Biceps, Beliefs, and Bourbon. I'm Scott Romine, and today we're going to talk about stress. Okay, it's number six on our flywheel of six, our health and wellness flywheel um, that successful people manage. And today is stress. That's a big one, right? Um, so we've had some big things this year, not this year, but last year. Um, that have come along that most of us have never experienced and it's caused a whole new type of stress and anxiety that we don't know how to cope with. All right, COVID's a huge one, we're still dealing with it. George Floyd, the Trump uh, re-election process, those things are huge and everyone uh, in the country and most of the world have experienced that. So. Let's tackle that a bit today, okay, on what, what is stress and how do we deal with it. From Holmes and Rowe, which is a study that was done in 1967, um, they put these as the top 10 things that cause stress. And there's a direct correlation between stress and illness that they studied. Um, not just from this test, but they studied it in the military a couple different ways and every time it was true. So their top 10 things for illness and stress um, are death of a spouse, right? That's a huge one. Uh, divorce, marital separation, imprisonment, death of a close family member, personal injury, marriage, Dismissal or fired from work. Marital reconciliation, so getting back with if you've been divorced. Um, and retirement are some really big ones on their study. Some more common ones that are, are relevant today, uh, along with those ones, are selling, buying, or moving a home, right? Uh, when you do those things, it's pretty high stress. Uh, taking a big test, like getting into college or in college or graduate school, your master's degree or any type of licensing that you have that you went to school for are really big ones, causes a lot of stress. Talking to someone you're interested in is another one, right? That's number three. Um, starting that new relationship. Okay, uh, starting a new job. That's very stressful, leaving a job and starting a new one. Uh, becoming a victim of a crime that's been studied and it's very hard to deal with very stressful starting a new business um, if you've ever had to if you've ever been a business owner like myself it's it can be quite stressful election years those are big ones we kind of talked about that the Trump re-election but election years are big um, I'll add in a few of my personal ones um, watching the news, as much as I try not to, whenever I put the news on, I'm like, oh, the, turn the TV on, the news is on. I'm just like, ah, so frustrating. I think if the news would just stop, a lot of our problems and stressful things would just go away. Um, another one is thinking about having a baby, planning for a baby, trying to get pregnant and having a baby, right? Those are all big ones. Uh, for me especially, um, but doing all of those, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of what I talk to people about. And there's a lot of stress coming at us. And a lot of us have multiple of those types of stressors going on, which then can create more anxiety. Um, and it's directly linked to illness. 
the higher the stress, the more likely they are to get sick. Okay, so that's why we want to make sure all the six points of our flywheel are taken care of so that we are able to handle stress more effectively when it comes along. We often think of stress as a mental state, but it's more than a, a thought in your mind. Okay, stress is a physical response in our body to a perce perceived threat. One of those words I can't say again, all right? Perceived threat. Think of like the old days, Stone Age, cavemen. They got stressed and the body flooded itself with cortisol and adrenaline to keep away attacking animals and tribes. While we do have some different threats, not as serious as that was back then. Uh, modern uh, stress defined by Richard S. Lazarius, okay, is an experience when demands exceed our personal resources that the individual is able to mobilize. Meaning, do I have all the things necessary going on in my life in order to handle the stress? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I drinking enough water? Am I exercising? Am I eating properly? Right? Do I have a proper mindset? in order to deal with that stress. Okay, so all of those things help to counteract that. When we experience a stressful life event that then becomes chronic stress, for example, of um, you have one after another after another, or like COVID, when it stays with you for month after month or even years, right? That leads to some very serious illness, um, which has been verified by studies time and time again. All right, so it's proven. So what are some of the types of illnesses that we can get from this? Chronic pain, obesity, diabetes, depression, anxiety, gastrointestinal problems, aging, I don't wanna get any older, Alzheimer's, high blood pressure, heart disease, asthma, and increased mental illness are all some serious things that can happen when we have that constant stress over time. Okay, so how do we deal with these stressful situations, right? First, evaluate the level of the situation. So um, think of 100, like the most stressful, the death of a spouse, right? A one, Where's my water bottle? Okay, not that big a deal, really big deal. So determining where you're at. Stress should pass normally, but when it doesn't, we need to help the body out. There's 10 ways, most common ways to deal with stress. And I'll give you some of mine at the end that I personally use. So one, acknowledge it. Hey, I'm freaking stressed, right? Telling your partner, whoever you're around, I'm stressed. I need some help. Recognize it, that you have a problem. Second, do nothing, right? Sometimes doing something is worse than not doing something. So it might sound a little crazy, but just sit and I always say marinate on it. Just sit and think about the situation. Is it really as stressful as it should be? How can I deal with it? Does something actually need to be done? Number three, self-care. Do something you love, okay? So take the time to have a bath. If you're a bath person, take a bath and relax, right? Go to a spa. Read. It helps some people. It might stress more people out. Depends on who you are. Do your hobby, meaning what do you like to do? Uh, play a video game. Go work out. Um, you know, throw axes or darts or something that, that you like to do and enjoy, okay, to help support yourself. Gardening. Walk, right? Those are some good things. Um, number four, get some support, all right? There's people to help you. Sometimes it's not the immediate people around you because they're invested in it as well. Um, we don't always want someone to tell us what to do, but there are online groups and forums that can help you. There's support groups in person as well, or seek some therapy. Therapy's great. I went for a long time. It really does work, okay? I recommend it. Clean the clutter is number five, right? What's that mean? Think of feng shui or vibe. Um, organizing 
the to- the things in your life, like your where you live or your office, that helps to clear and calm the mind. Everything's better when everything has a space and is organized. Six, exercise. I kind of mentioned it before, but this is one of the best ways to handle a stressful situation. Just simply 10 minutes okay, is enough to reset your mental and emotional state. So don't think it has to be this all-out toughest workout of your life. Just 10 minutes. Go for a massage, right? It calms you, feels good, helps the body. Eat well. Lots of food um, had help lower our stress. Some specific ones are dark chocolate, whole grains, avocado, fish, nuts, fruits, okay, the vitamin C, that really helps. So some foods can help calm you down. A cup of tea. A cup of tea can be medicinal. Medicinal. Um, also just taking the time to sit can really help you. The last one is practice prevention. Some stress you know will happen, you can plan ahead. Like, I know this is gonna be stressful. How am I going to mitigate those stressful situations when I know it's going to come up, right? Those are givens. But sometimes they come at you all at once. So the better neck, oh shit, the better mechanisms you have in place, the better you are to handle it. How can I handle these situations, right? You're set up and ready for it. Some of the favorite ones I use are I go for a walk. I start my day this way. Me and Ollie and my dog go for a walk. It just clears my mind for the day, all right? And then when I feel overwhelmed, you'll see me walking laps around the gym, okay? And inside when it's cold, outside when it's warm out. I just go for a walk, okay? Um, flame therapy, a candle. I don't have one right here, but I've got this little fireplace you can pour isopropyl alcohol in and it burns. I've got one at home, but I light a candle, set my timer. I'm about two minutes and I just focus on the candle and the scent or aroma of the candle. I I find it that one better than just sitting in quiet, but it's up to you. Try different things. See what works best for you. And breathing is a really great one. It almost always serves as a reset. Okay. Uh, and, And can help tremendously. So Box breathing, if you don't know what that is, it's five seconds in. Okay, that's the one line. Five second hold, holding that breath in. Five second out. Five second hold with it out. And do that five times. In conjunction, I do my finger taps. Okay, so it's that's how I count. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. Might seem a little corny. Try different things for you. It's what I personally do to help with these things. Okay, it's part of my daily routine and I do it when I'm really stressed. So I hope that helps. That's stress, the things that can happen when you let it get too far and things you can do to help prevent it and help take care of it when it does happen or seems like it's too much. And you can always reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you. Okay, so uh, from our world of whiskey book today, We are done our nine stages of um, creating whiskey. Uh, Now there's different types. So there are eight different types of whiskey. Uh, Malt, grain, blends, bourbon, my favorite, blended malt, pure pot still whiskey, rye and Tennessee whiskey. We'll go into more of what those are on the next uh, episode. All right, different types of whiskey. There's eight. Cool. And I forgot to bring a new tasting today, so I'm going back to our first one, Angel's Envy. You see, I have not drank the bottle. It's still pretty full, but I'm going to take a sip today. Just a little pour. Cheers to Angel's Envy. (sighs) Oldie but a goodie. That's the end of our episode today. Tune in next time. Um, Hope it was helpful. Have a great day. Cheers.
Thanks for listening to the show. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review, share with a friend. If there's anything I could do to help, please reach out. We will see you on the next episode of Beards, Biceps, Beliefs, and Sometimes Bourbon.